use headphones for best experience. streaming platforms as well, such as Spotify or uh, Apple Music and other platforms, um, you type in ASMRtica, ASMR, and uh, you will find a lot of albums and uh, podcasts here. This is the latest album, so check it out. map, nice map, that I bought a couple of months ago. Over the Nordic countries, the Scandinavian Peninsula, Finland, also Denmark. It's actually not possible to show it using this uh, camera angle this camera and yeah this setup so I can only show you parts of it but here it says um, Lascandi yeah it says uh, it's written in French here Lascandi ou les trois royaumes du nord Suède, Danemark et Norvège dédié aux très puissants et très invincibles princes Charles uh, the 12th. How do you say that in French? And Douze. Charles Douze. Ro, euh, roi de Suède, des Gottes et des Vandales. Grand duc de Finlande. Par sa très humble entrée obéissante. Servante la veuve de Nicolas, vice-chère, avec privilège. Okay, so I don't understand all these words, but it's uh, Scandinavia or the th three kingdoms in the north, Sweden, Denmark and Norway. And um, Charles Tous, it's uh, Charles the Twelfth, King of Sweden, during early eighteenth century. And I think this map could be from seventeen oh six, but I'm not sure. But I've, I've seen that on um, when I googled for some uh, ancient maps of Nordic countries in Scandinavia. I could find a similar map from uh, 1706. But it doesn't say a year on this map, I guess. I haven't found one. 
I not found a, a year when it was printed. But I think it would be nice to zoom in a bit and show you some parts of it. Also, it would be nice if you could read the text. So, this is a part of Finland, the southern part of Finland, Nyland, Nylandia. Uh, it's written, the names here are written in Latin. I think that was um, how you did write on maps uh, in the past. You used Latin as the, as the language quite often, I guess. So, Nilandia, it's a Latin modification of the Swedish word Niland of the Swedish name Nyland means new land and in Finnish this uh, province historical province is called Uusima Uusima I guess in when you pronounce Finnish it's very important to to like um, pronounce double consonants really long or not maybe not too long but at least uh, not too short because if you pronounce them too short then it will be like you're pronouncing only one one uh, letter instead of two when it should be two I think it's both, both uh, when it's about consonants and vowels. And Usima, it's um, written with two letter U in the beginning and two letter A at the end. Because if it would be just one U and one or one A, I'm not sure in exactly in this case, but in many cases uh, it will be a completely different word. So it will be different for a Finnish speaking person to to get what uh, word you're trying to say and to pronounce. So I will try to stress the the two double vowels here. Uusima. Uusi means new and ma means land. So it's a direct translation of Nyland. And by this time, 1706, Finland was a part of Sweden. And it had been Swedish for quite a long time, many hundreds of years. I think the Swedish colonization of Finland began here, the very southwestern part. It's called in Swedish Egentliga Finland, this uh, historical province. And that means uh, proper Finland, so the, the, or the original Finland. Um, now this region is translated to Southwest Finland in English, and um, in Finnish it's called uh, Varsinais Suomi. Varsinais means uh, actual, yeah, proper. Suomi means it's the 
Finnish name for Finland. So yeah, it has the same name in Finnish as in Swedish. Just translated. Yeah, but the reason I was zooming in into this area was because I wanted to find Helsinki, and here it is. Helsingfors, it says on this map, because here the... If it's not in Latin, um, it's uh, written in Swedish as the first language, I guess. So then it's Helsingfors, the Swedish name for Helsinki. Um, and uh, on, on an island just outside of Helsinki, there's a fortress, a very big uh, fortress, a lot of buildings on this island uh, remains from this fortress and uh, it's called uh, Swamenlinna and actually I was there earlier this year this winter and uh, in a shop there I found this map so I bought it there and since that I uh, wanted to do a video about it but I haven't uh, I just haven't done it until now because I also wanted to to read a bit about the Nordic countries before I recorded the video so so I had something to talk about and that's what I have done now for a, yeah, for a week or something uh, I've read a lot and it's so interesting to read about the history of Nordic countries a lot of things that I absolutely didn't know anything about that I have read about now. But yeah, I will not remember everything <laughs> uh, for this video, but that's usually how I plan my videos. I want to read a lot, so I have more to talk about when I record a video. More to choose from. Swarm and Linna means uh, Finland's uh, castle or fortress. Linna is castle. And it was built in the mid 18th century after a lot of uh, wars uh, between uh, Sweden and Russia. It was a very nice place to visit. Uh, I took the boat maybe 30 minutes from central Helsinki to this island and could walk around and see all the fortress uh, buildings and remains. I wonder what I could show you now. Unfortunately I cannot show you more things to the east now because of the size of the map and the setup. But let's move to this part of Finland. What does it say here? Septem, Septentrion it must be like this, Finlandia Septentrion, Latin for Northern Finland. And uh, it's definitely not Northern, North of today's Finland, but I guess the name referred to, refers to when this was Finland, the proper Finland, and this was North of that. And here's a city or a town called Björneborg. 
It's in Swedish. Mm, Björn is a name, but it also means a bear. But also a male name. So Björn, Björn's castle, Borg, or fortress. In Finnish, it's called uh, Pori. This uh, And this area, Finlandia Septentrion, is today called Satakunta. Well, I guess it was called historically also Satakunta. And uh, it's a region of Finland today. As well. We follow the coast or the Gulf of Botnia. Sinus Botnicus. So it's the Gulf of Botnia here and the Bay of Botnia here. Christine Stad. Christine is a female name. Christina. And Stad means uh, town. And um, there is a Finnish name for this uh, town as well. It's called the uh, Christina Kaupunki. But I think that uh, the Finnish name for this uh, town is not used as much as the Swedish name because this is in, in the the part of Finland where it's uh, where, where it's the most Swedish speaking population historically and today. The central or the southern part or the coastal part of uh, Österbotten. Well, I think uh, most of these uh, municipalities along the coast, uh, the majority of the people are Swedish speaking. And in most parts of Finland, it's uh, Swedish. Uh, Swedish is a mine minority language here it says Botnia Orion Orientalis So it means east of uh, Botnia. And Österbotten in Swedish. In English, I think it's called Ostrobotnia. And in today's Sweden, west of this bay, it's uh, the area is called uh, Western Botnia. And in the north, in Sweden at least, it's called North Botnia, North Botten. So East, Eastern Botnia was when the when these names were introduced. Then it was like very logical. Because it was west, north, and east of this bay. But now it seems it's not as logical anymore because in Sweden we have only west and north. But no east, and no south. And you can't have any, any land called South Bothnia, I guess. 
this because it's uh, since it's a bay it's only water here to the south but maybe we don't think so much about we don't hear so much about eastern Bothnia because that's now in Finland since uh, since uh, 18 beginning of 18 uh, I mean 19th century Sweden lost uh, this whole part of the country that became Finland so when you know that uh, Österbotten is in Finland then it, it makes more sense this, uh, these names yeah. and here's uh, Vasa in Finnish it's spelled with two letter A in the beginning so I guess it should be pronounced Vasa that's the only difference with the Swedish and um, Finnish name for this town Nykarleby it says here Maybe it could be nice to show you through this loop Here, yeah, this looks nice Nee Karle B Karl is um, Name, male name, Carl. B means village, so it's Carl's village, but it's the new Carl's village here to the north. We have the Al. was spelled with C in the south it was spelled with the K strange um, so this is the old I guess this is a symbol for a town perhaps high buildings the old Kalebi was here and for some reason they bought the, they built a, a new city here but today this is actually Kalebi so now they have changed name to just Kalebi and in Finnish it's called Kokola two letter K in the middle so I guess I should pronounce it more like Kokkola and um, yeah it's uh, not in the Swedish speaking area I think it's just north of, of this areas here where it's a lot of Swedish speaking population here it says Kayania in Latin Kayania que et Botnia yeah, orientalis I don't know exactly what que it means but it sounds like it could be you could either use this name or this name so Kayania maybe is another name for this area an old name that was used today Kayania is actually 
or a name similar to Kayonia is uh, Kayana land. Kayana land in Swedish. Um, Kaino in Finnish. It's the area here. Burg, yeah, Kajaneburg, the town here. See here, nice picture of a castle or some town buildings, city buildings. So here is a lake also. something here Ula T Tresk Ula Tresk And this is the Ula River This is also fun because this is a quite big city in Finland. Well, yeah, it's not one of the smallest at least. Um, in Sweden we have uh, the two biggest cities in the north, Umeå. Here, Uma it says. And uh, Luleå. Cities that are located at the estuary of long important rivers. So here's the Lule. Lule. that's actually a word in Swedish it means river or smaller river so Umeå Luleå is the city here and uh, a mix of the two names Uleå so they are hard they uh, they have very similar names in Swedish. Umeå, Luleå, Uleå. And um, in Finnish, um, this lake is called Oloyarvi. Um, Järvi is the name for the lake in Finnish. And south of Oulu uh, is uh, Brahe, 
Here's a small picture of the city and you can read here. This is a strange way of uh, writing the letter S in the past. It looks more like an F without uh, the dash in the middle. But it's an S, so it, it's Stad town. Brahe is a name, family name. I wonder who is named after. The only Brahe I can think about now is someone called Tycho Brahe in the Swedish history. But I don't know much about uh, what person that was. What he did or anything. But, um, the, the, Finnish name for this is Rahe. Quite similar. I think the Finnish language, in the Finnish language, it's not so common to use two consonants in the beginning of words. I could be completely wrong now. If you had a Swedish name called starting with Brahe and you would um, translate it somehow into Finnish then maybe you would drop one of the first two consonants to make it more um, like uh, to make it sound more Finnish so then it became a rae only. And with two A also. So you so you know it's not rae. Rae. So you, you have to stress the A. Rae. Also H is pronounced in Finnish. So rae. I think it's pronounced even more than in Swedish. In Swedish it's also pronounced, but quite almost inaudible sometimes. But in Swe if you listen to Finnish, I think you can hear it's a, it's, a, it's a letter you can actually stress quite a lot, just like any consonant. We can just uh, continue to look at this map, I don't know. I, I don't have a special plan for this video, how much I will show you. I think we can go on for, for um, one hour or so. Maybe we can move across the Gulf of Botnia and uh, talk a bit about the Swedish part of this map. So this is the uh, northern, the southern Norland. Um, Norland is a uh, is a part of Sweden that has no like it's not a provin province or region. It doesn't have any political meaning, but uh, Sweden is divided. Um, uh, historically, I mean, it's like you identify almost like if you're from Jutland, Svealand, or Norrland, the th three parts. 
Götaland to the south or uh, Skåne, Skåneland sometimes also because that's even more south than Götaland and it was Danish for a very long time until the 17th century it was Danish so Skåneland or Skåne Götaland, Svealand, Norrland and um, just like Finland yeah it used to be a, a fourth when Skåneland was not part of Sweden it used to be Götaland, Svealand, Norrland and Österland Österland was the eastern part of Sweden that is now Finland to the east, Öster means east but just like Norrland just like Finland actually Norrland was also like colonized quite late by Swedes there were in this part of the country there were more the Sami, Sami people were living here and the Swedes with the Swedish language they came from this area upland See, Uplandia was the center for old Sweden. Is this a U? letters to make it sound Latin. But it means the upper land, upland. And uh, before Sweden was uh, united into one country, upland, um, all the, all the uh, historical provinces were independent, almost independent or I guess it was a process, they were totally independent from the start but then from that time we don't have uh, any sources telling telling us how how it worked but they had their own laws and everything and then it was a process uh, starting in the late Viking age perhaps 10th century or something um, until the 13th century, a couple of hundred years when Sweden became um, its uh, were united, so it was decided what parts of today Sweden would would make Sweden as a country. The same with Norway. So upland here was uh, was a very important country for the Vikings around the uh, tenth, eleventh century, and it was actually divided into smaller parts as well. Around the capital Uppsala, I'll show you. Did you read? Uppsala Sal Where is the last A? Okay, in Latin they just wanted to call it Uppsala Um, 
that was capital, the capital. Stockholm was um, founded in the 13th century, but it was not considered the capital in the beginning, I guess. It was still Uppsala. And Uppsala was um, the country surrounding Uppsala was called Tiundaland. And the country to the west was called Fjärdrundaland. To the east, southeast, is it was Attendaland, and the coast areas here were Roden. Maybe this was Roden. Today it's called uh, Roslaga. An area, just uh, cultural, or what do you say, uh, historical province or you say maybe if you live here you say that you live in Roslagen but it has no like political function or anything it's just the name for the area Roslagen but it, then it was called Roden and this uh, was called also Roden or Norra Roden North Roden Gestrisia or Gestrikia was uh, also part of Uppland uh, or actually in the beginning I think even before Uppland was united when it still was uh, Fjärdrunda land or Tionda land those uh, provinces I think Gestrikland was actually part of Tionda land the Tionda land was where Uppsala was located was the strongest province here and expanded to the north and uh, Swedes were starting to move to the north and settle along the coast here and also yeah, a bit later in Finland as well so that's why we had the Swedish speaking majority here also a big Swedish speaking population here in Finland uh, Finlandia Meridio also a lot of Swedish speaking population in Nyland so I guess these were the first uh, parts that the Swedes colonized in Österland, or the only parts that they, they colonized. The rest of the country remained uh, almost totally Finnish speaking. Orland is interesting too, it's uh, almost uh, totally Swedish speaking today. But it's part of Finland. I'm very close to Sweden. Okay, uh, just just land. Later became considered the most southern part of uh, Norland the northern parts of Sweden so this uh, long important river Dalälven divided Svealand from from Norrland and it's still today it's the, it's considered to be the border between Svealand in the middle of the country and Norrland in the north of the country Here's uh, Gevald, Latin name for Gävle town. Then there is a lot of a forested area here with not a lot of. Uh, it's quite. Uh, what do you say? Not much inhabited area it's 
it's no big uh, cities or anything, or almost no villages, just a lot of forest here, called Edmorden. And north of Edmorden started like another country, almost for some time I guess it was considered an independent country, not part of Sweden, Helsingland. And it was centered here, today Söderhamn and uh, Hudiksvall should be here somewhere. Maybe Hudiksvall wasn't even founded here, because I can't find it on this map. Maybe Hudiksvall is a younger city, but Söderhamn you can see here. Söder... Hamn. Söder means south, Ham means port, harbor. And there are two villages close to Söderhamn um, called uh, Norrala to the north and Sö Sörala I think or Söderala and let's see I think what's this? Ian Ong Ian Onger to find the uh, Söderala or Norrala should be close to Söderham Nor, here it is Nor Ali Nor Ali I don't know what letter that is. Nur al als. Anyway, it should be today's Norala. And uh, those two villages are, I believe, they are older than the city of Söderham. This part, the southern part of Helsingland, was um, before even Helsingland was uh, considered like united as one entity, or one province, one kingdom. Uh, it, the southern part were, was called Alir, and I guess. Uh, that's where Norrala and Söderala was located. Al, you can hear from the name, Alir, the Alir area. Northern Al, Southern Al, Norrala, Söderala. And north of Alir province was the Sundiad province. And that was concentrated to today's Hudiksvall, I think. I don't think Hudiksvall is mentioned on this map and I don't know when the city was uh, founded but Sund Eats uh, province or if it even was like an old kingdom in the very long time ago, in the past, was concentrated around this place, I think, Fossa. Um, 
Sund Ed means it consists of two parts that word. We have first uh, Sund, it's a stretch or sound, and Ed is uh, like the opposite, it's a peninsula of land. So it's the, the water, the Sund, and the peninsula, the Ed. Uh, combination of those two will describe this area quite a lot because they are both, as you can see, they are both uh, narrow bays and straits like this and also peninsulas from, from the mainland out to the both uh, Gulf of Botnia also. And Ied was here, and then north of Sundid was another part uh, concentrated around Nordanstig, probably. But it's uh, not completely sure which parts uh, Helsingland originally consisted of when it was considered its own country before um, 14th century something. I think it didn't become part of, of Sweden until uh, some time in the 14th century. So quite late. Because I think the first part of fin parts of Finland, the proper Finland, was uh, Swedish already in the 12th century, for example. Um, so maybe Medelpad also could be one of these original Helsingland provinces. Medelpad is today not considered part of Helsingland. It's a it's a province of its own, not a political division of Sweden, but it's a historical province on its own. Also, there was a road here, a very important road, in early medieval times, probably, or maybe late. Viking Age called the uh, Norrstigen. Stig is a small road, but it was the main road along the coast if you wanted to go from Upland, from the center of Sweden, Uppsala, to the new lands in the north, on, along the northern coast. You had to go along this very important road. And along this road there were Kungsgårdar. Um, Kungsgårdar, they were like quite evenly placed along the road. So the king, for example, if he had to go from Uppsala to the north, he could stay at... The, they were like, they were royal, royal uh, farmhouses. Right? Um, it was where he could stay and all the people following him. So he owned some important uh, mansions or farmhouses along the way. And the first one, uh, after Admorden, this uh, empty area here, the first one was in Norrala, Kungsgården in Norrala. The second one was in Sundhed. The, thir the third one was in Jettendal, um, close to a place called Nordanstig today. Nordanstig means the northern path, path. So it's named after this very important road, historical road. The fourth one was in Medelpad, in Kungsnäs, Seerånger, close to Sundsvall today. 
Maybe Sun's Valley is also a uh, younger city because it's not here on this map. It's close to this place. Shan. Quite close to this place. Uh, today it's a quite big uh, town in Sweden, northern Sweden. So around today Sun's Valley was the fourth one. Maybe it was, uh, this was uh, calculated approximately how much you could travel at this time in, in one day. Not sure. And the fifth one was in Norstig. It's a village here called Norstig, which also means the sound is, uh, the, the name is very similar to Nordanstig, Norstig, Northern path and northern road Stig today is used for just footpaths uh, smaller um, walks in the forest for example that you can't go with any, any vehicle but I guess it's a very old n uh, word in Swedish means just any type of road but if you say road, if you say vag today, or yeah, vag today, the Swedish word is more than you're supposed to go by car, or, I guess. I would say, I would guess it's a bigger road for cars, but stig is for just walking. So today Helsingland ends here. The historical region Helsingland is only here. In the past it was at least to Medelpad as well. It included Medelpad. Uh, and it was its own country. And also it was the northernmost country. It, Sweden was not a northern limit or northern border of Sweden was not uh, decided. These were on unknown lands, um, and the Fort Sweets, of course, the Sami people lived here. But uh, I guess Helsingland at some point was described as the area of the way to Oulu. So here was the border between Helsingland and Finland. So Finland was Sweden. If we talk about maybe 14th century. Yeah, in 14th century, Finland's border or Sweden's border was going here. So this was Sweden and um, this was Helsingland on this coast and soon after it, it, it became part of Sweden as well also Jämtland let's see where we have Jämtland here Jämp Jämptia here's a lake in Jämtland, Storsjön, the Great Lake. I think uh, it's the fourth or fifth biggest lake in Sweden today. Jämtia was uh, also a kingdom on its own Qu until quite late. Maybe I said 14th century that uh, Helsingland was still Swedish, in f uh, still independent kingdom in 14th century, but I think maybe I mixed it up. Maybe it was Jämtland that was independent until uh, 14th century and Helsingland until 12th century, some, some point. Anyway, Jämtland was uh, later a part of Norway, 
this way. So Norway. We have Norway here to the west. Norway was... Norway's borders were here. Uh, this is the very northern part of Dalarna, historical province. Or actually here it is. Today this is Haryadalan, I think. But I know these two um, villages or towns. Sarna, Sarna, and where is the other one I wanted to show you? or Idre today those two villages were also part of Norway until um, the 17th century so quite long so Jämtland, Härjedalen those uh, mountainous parts of today's video Hanyadon is not mentioned here actually as a province, but it's between Yantran and uh, Dalana, Dalekarlia, the Latin word for Dalana. Um, here's somewhere is Hanyadon. This was like one kingdom, maybe, before it became a uh, part of Norway. But it was like, like uh, almost, or it had some, um, it was uh, somehow autonomous still. Uh, it, had, it still had some connections to both Sweden and Norway. and. Uh, it had been an uh, independent kingdom for quite a long time, so I guess it has historically been a quite independent region, this one. But since uh, mid-17th century, it has been Swedish province. it for today's video I hope you enjoyed thank you so much for watching take care see you soon sleep well <laughs>